Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You. Today we're taking a look at the Tog Heuer Carrera Caliber Heuer 1 Aston Martin Racing Special Edition. Now, first I'd like to remind you that we're here at J.B. Hudson Jewelers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who are an authorized retailer of Tog Heuer and member many other premium brands. I'd also like to remind you that we will be leaving a link in the description to our channel Amazon store where we have included some of our favorite watches and watch-related accessories. So definitely check that out as it does support the channel if you purchase. We do earn a commission on the purchases there, um, so I highly recommend you check that out. But without further ado, let's start the rest of the review. So as I said, this is the Tag Heuer Carrera Caliber Heuer 1 Aston Martin Racing Special Edition. Now, this watch is cr in was created in collaboration with Aston Martin or more in partnership with them. As you can see, it has the Aston Martin logo at nine o'clock on the dial. And it also has design, various design elements that are evocative of the Aston Martin brand. So some of the main differences are the, obviously that logo and then the hexagonal pattern that's on the dial. So it's become sort of less skeletonized, although it still is a skeletonized movement. Those, that hexagonal pattern really covers up a lot of the movement that you could see on the normal version of this watch. Uh, which some of you may may like, some of you may not like. Um, one thing I do not like as much on this as the more um, normal version of this watch is that they haven't included as many red elements on it. And I, I mean, it has the little kind of pip at 12 o'clock on the bezel and the uh, end of the chronograph second sense is red. But the other one um, with all those had much more red on it, and I really like that. Uh, the mixture of red and black kind of gives it a really sporty nature. Uh, and, I mean, it's pretty obvious that this watch was meant to look kind of black and dark and kind of very masculine. Uh, and that is also carried on to the case back, which appears to have a tinted sapphire um, sort of coat, uh, film on it. Um, and that makes the movement appear very dark, but the movement is finished very nicely. It's the Caliber Hoyer 1 movement. Uh, it is an in-house movement. It's got a 50-hour power reserve without the chronograph running and then a 40-hour power reserve with the chronograph running. And I usually wear uh, my chronographs without the chronograph running, so uh, 50 hours of power reserve, that's great. It's above my 48-hour standard, so I, um, I do approve of that. So... The overall kind of finishing on the case is very sporty. I mean, it's very, there's a lot of sharp angular angles to it, and it looks very, very nice. Um, the case d is part of their modular design, so it does have kind of a variety of materials on it. Um, it actually has even rubber on the crown, uh, which looks very, very cool. So I'll demonstrate the chronograph function now by pushing the top pusher here. So as you can see, it is not a flyback chronograph, so you, nothing really is going to happen if you push the bottom chronograph pusher. So to stop the chronograph, you push the top again and then reset using the bottom pusher. And the buttons feel very, very nice. They feel very mechanical. But just They feel like they were really well engineered, and I really like that. Um, the br the uh, strap on this watch is different from the normal version in that it has leather on the top and then rubber on the bottom. The normal one is just rubber all, all around. Um, I actually prefer just the regular version of the brace of the strap, and also I really prefer the regular version of the watch, um, just from style preferences. I mean, the quality is pretty much exactly the same, so I, uh, I that's not the reason I prefer the other one. I just think the other one is it's not more understated. I just prefer um, the lighter colors on it and the higher exposure of the movement. So now I'll move on to a wrist shot of this piece. So the diameter of this watch is 45 millimeters and that's pretty large, but for a watch that says kind of black and masculine as this one, I think that um, that large case size kind of goes with the territory. Um, I have about a 6.5 inch wrist in circumference and it looks even big on my wrist in my opinion, but it does have a lot going on. So it's not like there's a lot of open space, uh, which you do see with a lot of really large watches. There, is there's stuff to look at at all aspects of this piece so that large size from a design perspective doesn't really hamper anything for me it's just the actual mere fact of the, des the size relative to the size of my wrist so if you like this video please remember to subscribe and share and also remember to check out our other videos and share this with your friends i mean we're really trying to create a community of watch lovers we have access to a ton of watches from five hundred thousand dollar breguets to all the way down to like a fifty thousand fifty dollar Seiko, not $50,000 Seiko. Um, so definitely check out our other videos and share with your friends on Facebook or any of the other major uh, social media sites. We really would appreciate that. Thanks for watching.